All right, in this video, we're installing the Renogy Rover Charge Controller, 20 amp. Alright, this is how your charge controller is going to come out of the box. Nice manual. I've already glanced through it some. Did some reading. Uh, excellent manual. Excellent product. Or looking product, anyhow. Huge heat sink on the back. You can see. Help dissipate heat. Alright, what I'm doing, it comes with these a temperature sensor and these four little L brackets here uh, but I'm not going to use those I'm going to use the holes there's four holes and I'm going to make me a mark I already have two marks up here I have one right there one right there and then I'm going to measure down and across and go ahead and put two more marks and then put a little stainless steel mounting screws in there. And that's how I'm going to mount the, the charge controller. Okay, let's take a quick look at your terminals on the bottom. Get him to focus here. Starting all the way on this side, left side, you have temperature, PV positive, PV negative, battery positive. Battery negative, load positive, load negative, and an RS-232. Okay, let's look at our manual. I know we're men and manuals are just a suggestion. <laughs> the only time you go to a manual's last resort, but in this case, we need to read it and listen to it. It says, connect the battery terminal wires to the charge controller first, then connect the solar panels to the charge controller. Never connect the solar panel to the charge controller before the battery. So let's go ahead and hook the battery up to the charge controller. Okay, I want to check this battery real quick. I charged it up the other day and I want to see what the voltage is. 12.36. This is an old battery. I think it's a 2005. It's a 100 amp hour uh, power wear battery, but we're going to use it for this little project. I think it'll work fine. Okay, let me show you where I'm at right now. I have my battery positive and negative my load positive and negative these are all 10 gauge wires have an inline fuse now normally i use breakers uh, i like using dc breakers like this one this is an outback breaker here they're designed for dc but i don't have a 20 amp breaker so i I'm, i went ahead and ordered one just a minute ago hopped on my phone and ordered one but for now i'm going to use this 20 amp inline fuse it goes to the battery. Of course, I have the battery unhooked. The negative's hooked up, but I've got to get my terminals for my inverter. My cable's hooked up here, uh, so I haven't hooked it up yet. I may go ahead and hook it up just temporarily to show you the setup of the uh, charge controller here, but I do not have my solar hooked up. Right here's my two solar wires. I do not have it hooked up, so I need to hook up the battery first. I do have a quick connect here where I can pull these out and then I can go ahead and put me a breaker in here when my breaker comes. I'll put me a piece of DIN rail, maybe even mount a little box here and put my breaker inside it. Now, for my solar and my load, I have two breakers. Now, one thing I like to tell everyone, put a breaker or a fuse between every component in your solar system. So if you have a charge controller, solar panels come to a charge controller, you need a breaker between the charge controller and the solar panels. You need a breaker or a fuse between your charge controller and your batteries. You need a breaker or a fuse between your batteries and your inverter. So make sure that you have a breaker everywhere. And then if you're using a load, a DC load, like I'm going to here for our lights in our office, you need to have a breaker for it. And that's what the one on the left is for. That one there. One on the right is for the solar panels coming in. Uh, but one thing I did want to talk about. I told you this had an excellent manual. And it does. It has an excellent manual. If you go through here, I think it was page 26. It gives you your wire size and fusing. So, you need to 
read this, you need to match it up to the wire size and the correct size fuse or breaker. Uh, they have an excellent little chart in here and it tells exactly how to calculate it, whether it's series, parallel, fuse from the solar panels to the controller, fuse from the controller to the battery. It tells your wire size and it tells your breaker or fuse size. So make sure you read that. That's page 26. I'm using 10 gauge wire, using a 20 amp fuse here. I'm using a 20 amp breaker for the solar panels coming in. And I'm using a 10 amp breaker for my DC load because really I only have about four or five amps on it right now, but I may add some lights later. And I'm using 10 gauge wire. So my 10 gauge wire can handle, if we look at their handy dandy little chart right here, 10 gauge wire can handle up to 40 amps. Okay, so that's way above what we're going to be doing. Uh, you can see I have a ring terminal on this and just a couple little connectors there to hold downs to help hold it uh, just so it's nice and neat. So let me go ahead and hook this to it. We'll go ahead and go through the menu on this charge controller. We have our battery hooked up. Just want to show you real quick. I have mine set. I have a 12 volt system. And then the type battery, I set it also. And I'll, I'll show you here real quick how you set it. You take this right arrow key and you hold it for a couple seconds and it comes up and it's flashing. So you can scroll through the different battery types. You can read the manual, uh, what battery type you have. And then you can hit it again. You'll see the voltage start flashing. You can do 12 volts, 24 volts, 12, 24 but I'm gonna leave it on 12. And then you just hold this down for a couple seconds and it'll go back to the home screen and save your settings. So you need to set that first. You need to set your voltage and your battery type. Uh, if we look in the manual, right here, it shows you that on page 19 and then on page 20, like for the 12 volt settings, and that's what we're using shows equalizing voltage 15.5 boost voltage 14.4 over discharge voltage 11 volts over discharge return voltage 12.6 and the float voltage is 13.8 which is exactly what we want our battery says 13.5 to 13.8 volts for float voltage but that's how you set it uh, we have our load hooked up so that way it'll help uh, it'll shut the load off if our battery gets too low. If the voltage on it gets too low, it, it'll shut it off. Uh, also, you have lights right here. Uh, this would show solar coming in, which it thinks it's nighttime now because I do not have my solar hooked up, but we're fixing to hook it up in a second. Shows your battery, shows your load, and then if you have any errors, which you can turn the load on and off. You can see that light went off just by hitting the right arrow button you can see it's back on so now the load's on so if i flip my switch up here my lights would come on okay i've got our solar panels hooked up but it's not showing it right now because i have the breaker up top shut off uh, i just wanted to mention a few things about this controller there's plenty of room behind look you can, i can stick my hand behind it uh, to get to the terminals and that's really nice uh, i've done a lot of controllers and some of them will be right up against the wall they don't have enough room for you to get in there very well with just your fingers and you have to use a pair of needle nose pliers. Uh, but this Rover charge controller has plenty of room to get to the terminals and I really like that. Um, another thing, if you don't use any kind of terminal ends on your wires, if you just use copper wires, when you tighten these up, wait about 15 minutes and come back and try to tighten them again because sometimes copper will compress and you'll get, get them a little bit tighter because you don't want a loose connection uh, that'll create arcing and it'll either blow your fuse, blow your breaker, or it should anyhow, uh, or it could create a fire. All right, I went ahead and hooked the solar panels up. You can see the lights on here, uh, the battery lights on, and so is the load light. Uh, as you can see, we're at 13.3 volts and it has nice little lines here going across. They just keep moving across showing that the solar, it's daylight out an MPPT course charge controller showing it's putting uh, solar amperage voltage into your battery and the load is enabled. 
So if we go to this top button, let's cycle through. It's showing 14.8 volts right now, uh, which is a little bit low. It should be around 18 volts for that 12 volt panel, but the sun, we're getting later in the day and it's hitting it. I have these panels mounted on a flat roof and I'm gonna do a complete video on this install. So I'll put the link in the description below when I get that posted. Uh, but it, when I first post this, that link won't be there because I won't uh, have this installation complete. I still have to hook up the inverter and wire that all up. Uh, but it's showing 14.8 volts, which like I said, should be around 18. Uh, it's putting in 5.5 amps right now, which should be around uh, 12 to 13 amps. Uh, our battery, it's showing it at 100%. It's at 13.4 volts, 13.5. Our load is at 0.02 amps, which is basically nothing, but I'm gonna reach up here and I'm gonna flip the switch on and turn our lights on, which I already have all those wired up. They're DC lighting in our off-grid office here. Um, so watch what happens. Lights are on. And for three light bulbs, which they are LED, and they are 12 volts and they're nine watts. Uh, it's pulling 1.4 amps. So you can see it doesn't pull a whole lot of electricity uh, running the lights, which we're not gonna be running lights in here a whole lot, maybe some this winter. Um, we might be out here late in the evening and need to run the lights a little bit uh, while Christie's working in her office um, doing eBay packages or listing stuff on eBay. But mostly this system is gonna be for charging her laptop, running her printer, uh, running a scanner, and the lights. And that's pretty much gonna be it in here, you know, just for an off-grid office to, to get our uh, office work done. So I'm gonna flip this back off. So there goes the switch off. And you can see the amperage will drop down to 0 or 0 0.01. So if we go to the next one, since I just started it, it doesn't have a total yet, but this is where it'll show how many amp hours we've put into our battery since our solar system was hooked up. And this is going to show how many amp hours we've used on our load. Okay, there's the temperature. I don't have the temperature sensor hooked up yet. It's still here in the little baggie. Uh, which I'm going to get it hooked up and it'll hook up on the bottom where the terminals I showed you earlier and uh, it, It'll come in handy this winter for sure uh, the summertime I don't worry about temperature sensors too much on charge controllers, but in the winter time when it gets cooler I definitely want this sensor on there because then it'll up the voltage and keep our batteries in better shape Okay and then that's our load protection. You can go into your settings, which if you read your manual, you can go in there. We have it set on 15 right now. Uh, let me look here and see what 15 means. It means it's in manual mode. In this mode, the user can turn the load on or off by pressing the enter button at any time, which I will show you that here in a minute. There's no errors. Okay, and what that's talking about is right here, I can hit this arrow and you'll see this light go out for our load. And you can see it go off. And then the little arrow, it quits uh, putting power into it. And I can hit it again and the load is on. But that's got us. That's uh, everything on this Rover Series or Energy. Uh, 20 amp is the one I have. There's a 20, a 30, and a 40. Uh, this, so far, it's working great. I'll probably do a review on it later on in the year, or maybe even I may wait about six months and see how well it works and how well it lasts. Uh, but if you have any questions on this charge controller or how we wired it up, uh, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.